Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of My Waifu and me and today we're going to be doing something super special we're going to be going through every single volume of manga that we own so we're going to be showing you our entire around 300 volume manga collection I hope you guys are excited so let's get right into it All right, so we're gonna start off with this lone shelf here. This is just its own shelf. It's not connected to any of my other manga shelves. And it just has all of our Berserk volumes. And you'll notice that volume three and volume five are both missing from this shelf. And that's because I am currently reading volume five and the waifu is currently reading volume three as of the filming of this video. So they're not on the shelf. But if you haven't seen, these are the Berserk omnibuses. They're currently uh, seven of them released, which is, we have all seven. We haven't opened six or seven yet because we haven't read it that far yet. It's kind of what it looks like on the front of each omnibus. But uh, yes, Berserk, wonderful, wonderful, gory story. A beautiful, beautiful story. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. This is definitely the preferred way to read this story. I would not encourage you to read it like online. Uh, you could read it through the singles, sure. Uh, but I really think that this is the the best way to enjoy Berserk. So definitely check it out. So Berserk volumes one through seven, even though we are missing, uh, the two omnibuses aren't on the shelf right now. So next up, we've got this shelf here, and you'll see here, it's just a couple shonen titles. We started with um, the Shaman King singles, so I do have quite a few volumes of the Shaman King singles. We have 17 of them that I was able to get for below retail pretty recently. I was trying to get all 32, I believe, of the original singles, but around 17, they get, started to get really pricey, so if anyone has that full set, um, I'm sure that's really awesome because it's a really cool set. Uh, Waifu and I both recently read all of that it is really hard to put a volume back on the shelf with one hand so um waifu and i just recently read all of shaman king we were able to read it online that's how we were able to read it but we did read the first 17 via the singles which was nice then we've got two uh four random volumes of naruto i believe this is just you know volume one and two just because and then this is volume 31 and 32 you'll notice that on the back here i bought these when i was a kid so the price tag on there 7.95 instead of 9.99 these are from when I was really young and I've just held on to these for years and years. And they're still here in my manga collection, which is pretty sweet. But gotta keep a couple Naruto volumes. We might get the box sets one day, but not yet. Then you've got Aishield 21, volume one, two, three, and four. And if you ever, and yeah, our first Aishield 21 volume has some like intense water damage. Again, it's from when I was young. So I've just kept this for forever. And uh, yep, yeah, so I only have the first four volumes bottom when I was a kid and just never completed the series. Unfortunately, I was more of a fan of the anime growing up, so had to get a couple of those. If you've never read it, it's a really cool uh, sports manga. It's a sports manga by Richiro Inergaki and Yusuke Murata, who is, Richiro is the author of Dr. Stone, and Yusuke Murata is the artist that does the redraw of One Punch Man. So it's definitely a series you should check out if you've never seen it before, or never, you know, if you're into sports. It's about American football. You know, young character here, Sina Kobayakawa. He, he runs really fast and gets recruited onto the American football team. So then you've got Zombie Powder, volumes one, two, three, and four. There's only four volumes of that. Big uh, TT Kubo fan, so I had to get Zombie Powder. I uh, have just had those for a long time in my collection. It's only four volumes. That's all that they made of Zombie Powder. So I'll kind of show you one of the volume covers here. It's super cool. Very cool series and uh, very stylish. Just like Bleach, actually, if you've never read Bleach. Zombie Powder is, it's interesting. You know, I haven't read it in many years at this point, but uh, it's a fun little kind of Western-esque Western, but there's like some other cool parts about it as well. And then here we have our Yusuke Nindroid, and right behind our Yusuke Nindroid is four volumes of Yu Yu Hakusho. I plan to complete this series eventually. I picked these four volumes up at a half price books, and uh, they were like maybe $2.99 or something, so I had to grab them. And I plan to get the rest of the series, but I just have not yet. So we'll see um, when I finally do, but luckily they've mostly been reprinting Yu Yu Hakusho over the last couple of years, so it's not super hard to find all the volumes, but yeah, Yu Yu Hakusho, one of the best from Yoshihiro Tagashi, one of the best shonens in my opinion, one of my favorites of all time. Had to get that series, recently showed the waifu, actually all of Yu Yu Hakusho, and I think she liked it, so. I did like it. I think she liked it. Uh, this here is actually a single volume of Dragon Ball in French, and the reason I have that is because my buddy visited France and he bought that for me and gave it back to me as a present on when he came back. So that's pretty sweet. So we'll go to this next shelf here. Next, we have 1 through 18 and volume 21 of One Piece. This is the original uh, gold trim print run. So I'll kind of show you um, here. This is just from my collection from when I was a kid. 
Always been a big One Piece fan. If you don't know what One Piece is, I don't think I have to describe it to you all. Hopefully, if you're watching the video, you know what One Piece is, but obviously the story of Monkey D. Luffy. I plan to get the new prints eventually via the box sets, but for now, I have the gold prints, and I think I'm only... What I've learned is that I think they only did 21 volumes in the gold prints, so I'm going to try to get my hands on uh, the last... So I really only need 1920 and 22 and 23, and then I'd have the complete set of the gold trimmed ones and so yeah if you didn't they're all what's different is that the trimming is gold and then obviously there's no uh arc printed on the spines like the new prints are all right great but yeah one piece monkey d luffy treasures okay this is boba bo classic shonen jump manga that well i guess it's classic now it's definitely in the, from the 2000s comedy manga series featuring boba bo and his fight against the baldy bald empire never heard of it really funny anime series this was a single volume that they published way back in the day and uh then they proceeded to publish i believe five or six singles after this that were sort of just random they weren't even in the correct order it was just like five random volumes but this single volume i've always had it just has no numbering on it it was just like a single standalone then we've got our ichigo nindroid right here in front of a couple legitimately random volumes of bleach so bleach the story of ichigo kurosaki substitute soul reaper classic these are also just old volumes from my collection from when i was a kid that i've kept around for a long time so one two three twelve and twenty four super random this one has grim jow on the cover so i really like this one so i've just never gotten rid of it pretty sweet though one two three twelve and twenty four next one is actually kind of rare now is what i've heard it's strawberry 100 volume one I picked this up a very long time ago when I was very young. You can even see kind of the, a little bit of the yellowing there. But uh, Strawberry 100% or Ichigo 100% Volume 1. I read a lot of it when I was a kid and watched the anime when I was a kid. Big fan of the series. It's definitely a classic sort of Shonen Jump title also now. It's one of those things that kind of aged with us. But about a guy, he sees a girl with uh, strawberries on her underwear and sort of falls in love. It's a very interesting kind of love triangle story. And then you've got... Trigun the Maximum, or just Trigun Maximum Volume 1, the OG Volume 1, just another volume from when I was a kid, big fan of Trigun, about the, uh, what is it, $80 billion double dollar man, Vash Stampede, his kind of western sort of series, very cool series, very classic anime that, you know, used to come on Adult Swim when uh, we were growing up, and then we've got Gaunt's Volume 1 and 2, these are the original singles of Gaunt's, I've had these for a pretty significant amount of time, did not pay, you know, resale prices for these, these are bought these for retail a very long time ago when they were being printed and just never bought more uh, which i really regret i never finished the manga i never finished uh, the anime either it's just one of those series i dropped at some point in my childhood and never went back to i've always wanted to go back and read the manga but i know it's almost impossible to get your hands on the singles anymore you can really only get your hands on the omnibuses gone to the story of uh, two kids i think one's name is k i can't remember the other kid's name they die in an accident and sort of end up in this purgatory type world fighting aliens if you've never well, alien-like beings. If you've never checked out Gaunt, it's a very unique, a very unique and fun story. Very bloody, very gory, super cool manga. So then you've got Fairy Tale Volumes 1 and 2. I regret having these on the shelf, but at some point in time in my young adulthood, I decided to pick those up and uh, regret it ever since. I hate Fairy Tale. I hate Fairy Tale to death. It's the worst. Uh, it's just, it's just crap. So sucks to suck uh so that's fairy tale if you've never read it it's about natsu he's a magic person who you know does magic stuff or whatever freaking natsu down here you're gonna see fire punch volumes one through eight this is a story by tatsuki fujimoto who also authored the story chainsaw man which you're gonna see in just a little bit as well on another shelf but fire punch this is the original full story so all eight volumes of fire punch unfortunately have not been able to read this yet i picked up all the volumes on a pretty good deal i believe and uh just decided i was going to read it eventually after i read chainsaw man so fire punch hopefully me and the waifu will probably read all of that soon because it's uh very good it's i've heard it's very good i hope it's very good so i know Soon we've got Raw Hero Volumes 1 through 4. This is a series by Akira Hiramoto, the author of Prison School, another very popular manga. I wish I could explain to you what Raw Hero is about. It uh, would probably confuse me to even try to explain it. There's a world of superheroes. A kid gets suckered into this weird job, and he ends up uh, dressing as a woman. Um, some really strange stuff happens. I've read, uh, I haven't read all four volumes yet. I think I've only read like the first two so far but it's very strange it's only six volumes there's still two volumes that need to come out they're gonna go right here but yes raw hero volumes one through four by kiramoto if you like that stuff that sort of etchy comedy right up your alley 
Then you've got the Dragon Ball Viz Bigs. I'm a big fan of OG Dragon Ball, not Dragon Ball Z. The waifu has never seen Dragon Ball Z. She's only seen the OG. Um, but this is my uh, Viz Big collection of that. Bought the first volume of this a long time ago. You can actually see kind of the damage pretty that's been dealt to this thing over the years. Uh, but I just recent, more, much more recently picked up. Uh, oh, wait. And the second one is also kind of old. But three uh, through five I just recently picked up because I don't know why I didn't have them. So I finally completed that set because this is all of the original Dragon Ball. Obviously, the story of young Goku, sort of a comedy action in search of the Dragon Balls, all sorts of fun stuff. There's a lot of martial arts. Great series. If you, for some reason, never read Dragon Ball, I'm not sure that that's going to happen. This is JoJo's Just just Part 2. So there's <laughs> this is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 2. Um, and the reason I have Part 2 is because it's my favorite part. I've obviously seen the anime for Parts 1 through 5. Uh, I've never really read the manga for any of them, but... Uh, JoJo's Part 2 is my favorite part, so I decided to pick up the manga for Part 2 so I could have it just in my collection on display. Big Joseph Joestar fan, um, so I had to get this. So if you don't know the story of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, sort of this adventure across multiple generations, uh, lots of history, bloodlines, uh, vampires, uh, people with spirits. It's a very interesting series, lots of fun stuff, lots of fun battles. It's one of the best battle shonens that you're really ever gonna ever gonna read or re really ever invest in so all right so that's shelf number two let's get over to shelf number three all right shelf number three we're gonna start off with a repeat here so we've been buying the shaman king omnibuses that just came out um this is shaman king omnibus one if i can get it out of the shelf geez um that's shaman king omnibus one it's newly printed by kodansha this is a brand new print that just happened over the last couple months they're gonna be printing Hopefully the whole series in these three in ones, they're a little hefty, but uh, yeah, so Shaman King, I don't know if I described it earlier, but obviously it's about Yoasakura in his uh, sort of shaman battle. It's a big shaman tournament. Next, you've got Platinum Ends Volume, Platinum End Volume one through eight. Uh, I have not gotten to read this yet, but Waifu has. I don't know what you have to say about it, Waifu. Uh, well, the biggest thing to note is that it's by the creators of Death Note, so you know it's going to be pretty, Excellent. I think it's really well done. The art is magnificent, of course. And it's a really interesting story. So instead of, you know, Shinigami or Death Gods, it actually involves angels this time. And it's about a battle between, um, it's like 12 or 13 humans, I think. Um, each angel from heaven comes down and chooses a human to participate in this, like, battle to become God. So they're choosing a new God. Um, so it's very um, unique in, in a certain sense, but um, definitely recommend it. And I love the covers. I love that they have that. Yeah, they have um, sort of like a foil, like a... It's like a Pokemon card. Yeah, it's know? got sort of like a holographic foil. You can kind of yeah. see it in the video here. See that holographic foil print on them? That's yeah. always pretty cool. That's on all the covers across the board. So uh, that's volumes one through eight of, sh of Platinum Man. I do hate that the logos don't match on the printings that we have. <laughs> yeah. Bit of a bummer. It happens sometimes with these biz titles, uh, unfortunately. So then we've got Spy Family or Spy X Family, volumes one through five. I've only read a couple volumes of this. Waifu's caught up, I believe. I am. Um, but it features this character, Twilight. He kind of goes undercover for a big spy mission because he's sort of this international spy, badass and uh, slowly you start to kind of realize, uh, you know, he starts to put together this family essentially in his undercover experience. And there's lots of interesting drama and fun uh, that comes along with it, a bit of a comedy series, but this is all five volumes. I believe this is caught up as of this recording. This is all five volumes. Yeah. So then you've got one through eight of Toilet Bound Hanako-kun, a very popular series right now, sort of a, I don't know, spirit shown in. I've read the first mm -hmm. one and a half. Waifu's read a lot more than I have. I've read through seven, so mm -hmm. that's where I'm at right now, so. Yeah, so she's read through it's... volume seven. It's pretty fun. <laughs> like uh, it. yeah, features sort of this character that was in, t you know, this character's supposed to be Hanako. It's this myth at this school, and, you know, everyone assumes it's a girl, but then it ends up being this male spirit, and the spirit has to deal with sort of other spiritual goings-ons at this school. Uh, definitely a fun little shonen. It's worth worth a little bit of time if you've never checked it out before. Then you've got Jujutsu Kaisen 0 through 10. This is also up to date as of this recording. So volume 0 through 10. We love Jujutsu Kaisen. Features this character, Yuji Itadori. He eats the, uh, the finger of Sukuna and has to become a Jujutsu sorcerer. Goes to Jujutsu Technical School and uh, deals with a lot of interesting uh, demons, monsters, things like that. So very cool 
also spirit, uh, spirits based, you know, manga and stuff. I haven't got all around to reading the manga yet, but it really enjoyed the first season of anime. So I had to pick up everything that was there. I don't know why. Didn't you love the... Yeah, I, I really enjoyed what I've read of it so far, but as of right now, we've only watched what has come out of the anime, so the first yeah, season. Which I think ends around, like, volume six or seven, or yeah, something, something like that. Yeah, something like that, but I think we plan to read it, um, but we're definitely excited for the movie, which is going to adapt Zero. Yeah, volume zero. Um, which is, it's crazy, because, like, if you never read Zero, you have no idea who that character is, and the, yeah. he's kind of, like, mentioned in this first part, the right. first couple arcs, um, but I think it's it's gonna be a really cool movie and just you know the I mean you know if you know Mappa you know that they're just a, an amazing animation studio and I think they've done a lot of justice to the series. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, next little list here. So first we have My Dress Up Darling Volume One. I only bought one volume. I read it. Didn't like it very much. It's about a guy. He's shy. He doesn't have really any fit friends. And a girl who's super popular and she stumbles and finds out that this guy is a, a good at sewing and she really wants to cosplay. So they kind of team up and decide to do it together. You know, sewing, cosplay, yada, yada, yada. They build a friendship from that. So uh, I'm not gonna, not sure if I'm going to pick up any more. I think there's four volumes out as of this recording. Next, we have Beauty and the Feast by Satomi Yu. Just volume one. I don't think volume two is out yet. Not yet. It's not mm -hmm. coming out until later this Fall, fall 2021, whatever you're watching this video. Um, but I think it's a really cute and wholesome story. Um, maybe if you first look at it, you might think that there's something like a little, I don't know, edgy about it. But it's really about how it, um, two people kind of come together just by circumstance. This young high school boy, he, he has to move away from his family to play baseball at a school on a scholarship. And then um, uh, he moves next door to a widow who just misses, you know, cooking for people and, and just taking care of a person. So she ends up cooking for him all the time. So I'm excited to see the next volume that comes out. It's definitely very wholesome. Mm -hmm. Next, we have a single volume of 20th Century Boy Boys, just the very first volume by Naoki Urasawa. This is the single editions. I plan to get the whole set of this eventually. Don't have it yet. I, I read this a long time ago when I was a young kid. Don't remember the plot details exactly, but I just know it's kind of a drama mystery. So um, I plan to get the whole set. I've only ever read the first volume, so I've never read past that. So I'm really excited to finally get a read it because I've heard it's a really, really great story. Next we have Shibuya Goldfish Volume 1, another one that I picked up Volume 1 of and did not like it very much. Uh, the story kind of goes that the dudes in Shibuya and Goldfish start eating people and they kind of have to deal with it survival horror style. Not my favorite first volume. I did pick up... Uh, I may or may not have picked up volume two. You'll find out if when we uh, when we do our June haul video. Um, but uh, I have volume one here, and I did yeah, not my favorite, but we'll see how it goes. Next we have Zom 100 volumes one and two. These are awesome so far. Uh, really enjoyed both of them. Zombie story, but the idea of the zombie story is that this guy, the main character, he is excited that it's the zombie apocalypse because he finally doesn't have to go to work anymore. So he decides to kind of make a bucket list and finally take care of that bucket list because of the fact that everyone is dead or dying or a zombie. So he's doing everything he's ever wanted to do. Next we have Blue Periods, volume one, two, and three. This is a kind of a newer popular shonen. I've read volume one. Waifu, you've read up through volume- I've read volume... all three. Oh, Waifu's read all three that are out, but we did not read ahead past the physicals. Um, pretty cool story. I mean, only thing I'll say, just got kind of a delinquent kid decides he wants to do artwork and uh kind of redefines his path because of that so yeah. if that interests you definitely one to pick up and give a shot it's starting to gain some steam now definitely. um so in my full happiness collection happiness volumes one through ten this is the complete uh series uh it was a bit of a pain to pick it up when i was picking it up but now it seems easier to find it looks like it's getting reprinted again um it, these have some of the coolest covers that you will ever see. Um, but Happiness is a story by Shuzo Oshimi, one of my favorite artists, manga artists personally. Uh, it's a really interesting story about- Where's my favorite? Uh, the best way I can describe it is that it's about a kid and he deals with some supernatural experiences uh, that are a little bit akin to uh, youthfulness, you know, that there's some, there's some story that kind of builds from that 
and I don't want to spoil it too much because I think it's kind of a good experience to, to get into. So um, definitely worth picking up Happiness if you don't have those already or if you haven't read it. Next, we have the complete collection up to, as of this recording, of Dr. Stone, one of our favorite new Shonen Jump titles. Obviously, story goes, the world was turned to stone. Sinku wakes up a uh, very, very long time later and essentially has to rebuild society, humanity from the ground up using science. So if that interests you, you got to check out Dr. Stone. Definitely one of our favorite new generation shonens. I think I'm on volume 12 is what I've read up to. The waifu is caught up even past the printed one. I so. read it weekly on, on Shonen On the Online. Shonen Jump app. So, and my really cool Senku pop-up parade. Uh, cool little, he kind of goes with the Dr. Stone collection. So down to this bottom row here. It's a little hard to get down here, but we're gonna try our best. So we have Blood on the Tracks volume one through four by Shuzo Oshimi also. Same author as Happiness. Have not been able to read that yet, so uh, it's on my t TBR list and waifus probably as well. Mm -hmm. As well as Goodnight Pum Pum. We just picked up volume one. We know it's great. We've heard great things. There's some weird things about it, but we found volume one uh, as it's getting reprinted uh, and we're gonna have to read it in the future. So uh, Goodnight Pum Pum. My son, we know it's about a depression. Um, <laughs> That's <laughs> what I've heard. <laughs> Maisou ni Koku, a classic Rumiko Takahashi story. Really love these new printings of these. So we definitely, uh, we got this at a good deal at Half Price Books. Definitely picked it up so we can finally read it. No Longer Human by Junji Ito and Osamu Desai. Classic uh, Japanese novel, uh, but Junji Ito turned it into a manga. There's another earlier manga version that some people stand by as the better, superior version, but that's whatever. I haven't read that yet either. Um, these are two random Japanese volumes of One Piece that I found at Half Price Books. I picked that one up because it has Nico Robin on it. I just picked that one up just because. So two random Japanese volumes of One Piece. Um, next, a very rare volume of Afro Samurai. Uh, picked this up when I was a, a young kid, and it's now worth a very pretty large sum of money. So Afro Samurai Volume 1. Um, if you've never seen Afro Samurai, go check out the anime uh, as well as the sequel anime that I think it's all on Netflix maybe or Hulu. Something like that. So definitely go check it out. Really cool story about Black Samurai. It's super awesome. Worth checking out. But the manga is pretty hard to get your hands on nowadays. Um, but yeah, I have the first volume there. Uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Volume 12 <laughs> from Stardust Crusaders. Old volume from my old life uh, that I just still have. And I'm not sure why I have Volume 12, but that's just the way it is. Um, we already talked about JoJo's. So uh, High School of the Dead, classic zombie, etchy story about some high school students that have to survive a zombie apocalypse. I only have volumes three and seven, found them for below retail at a secondhand store. So three and seven, and I, I don't know if I'll ever complete the series just because some of the volumes I think go for quite a bit now, but uh, pretty cool to, to have because from a secondhand store, more secondhand store pickups, Cromartie High School, pretty funny comedy. I've seen the anime series up to, in, when I saw this at a secondhand store for like four or five bucks. I had to get it even though it was volume one and as you can see here, volume 11. But Cromarty High, if you've never seen the anime, it's a comedy series about sort of a normal kid who goes to like an all delinquent high school. Uh, some really funny one-liners, just really, really funny. Wife, you can talk about this one, given volume one. Yeah, I mean, I'd say it's a pretty popular one. Um, it, I saw for a long time that two was really hard to find. So I had to just stick with one and I read it and I really liked it. Um, it's boy love, so if you like that kind of stuff, um, definitely up your alley, I'm sure. Um, but they're all about just guys in a band and, you know, two of them are doing boy love stuff. So. Sweet. <laughs> Dudes in a band. Uh, then we got Car Curry Doji Ultimo Volume 1. This is also something I was able to pick up at a half price store, half price books, I believe found this uh just recently which was sweet i read this when i was a kid uh, i read it <laughs> suspicious ways when i was a kid never owned the physicals so it was cool to find a physical volume because i've heard these are going up in value this tells the story of essentially these two robots that awaken in modern time that were originally from a long time ago they awaken in modern time and sort of relive their their history is the best way i can describe it they're sort of these robots, they partner with humans. It's pretty interesting. Stan Lee helped with the creation of this, the original concept, if you've ever heard of that. And uh, Hiro Takai, the artist that did, the artist and author that did Shaman King. This is his other work. I love Ultimo. I don't know if I'll get the whole set, because again, it's worth a lot of money, but I like having volume one in my collection, because I got it for a good price. Undone, unluck, Undead Unluck Volume <laughs> One, Jesus. That's undead, that's unluck. They have these kind of special powers. They're being hunted by like an organization that hunts powers. Only read volume one because I just want to read the physicals, not online. 
So I'm gonna wait for the next physical to come out. Pretty interesting. Neither of us have read this yet, but we picked it up at the recommendation of many of our friends. Comey Can't Communicate, volume one. Uh, it looks really wholesome, so I hope we enjoy it. Um, and then you got I'm a Hero Omnibus is one, two, and three. These have all been reprinted recently, so I picked them up. I'll probably pick up four as well, because it was also recently reprinted. Uh, the story is this story of this guy. He's a mangaka, and he's kind of a shit, and uh, I don't know if I can say that on the channel, but uh, he's kind of the worst, and ends up in a zombie apocalypse, is what you learn by the end of the first omnibus. So, for kind of a slow burn for a zombie survival story, but I'm excited to read more, so... We'll see. I don't know. It's 11 omnibus volumes, I believe, to complete the set, but most of them pass like four or five are not reprinted yet, but I think they're going to reprint them all. So in time. So if uh, anyone else wants to pick that up, be on the lookout for it for sure. Okay. On to our last shelf. All right. So the last shelf. So first things first, the full uh, set of Buddha by Osamu Tezuka. The Godfather of All Manga is the word that I would use. So that's volumes one through eight of that. These are printed in a traditional English style. So they're not printed uh, in the Japanese manga style. They were flipped for the English release. Um, kind of interesting, we haven't read them yet, but we picked this up for half of cover price, I think, at Half Price Books. So we wanted to check it out. It's one of Osamu Tezuka's classic mangas. So next you've got a couple of really old uh, Shonen Jump volumes from my childhood. So. If anyone's into that, these are some old English printed Shonen Jump volumes. I'm just gonna show you a couple of that. And then, yep, so I just have held onto those for many years and I just make sure to kind of include them in my display all the time. I also have a single issue of 2021 uh, Shonen Jump. This one just was really cool because it had Luffy on the front and I just kind of leave it wrapped in plastic. You can buy these at Kino Kuniya, uh, which is close to where we live. And so sometimes if they have cool covers, I pick them up. Next, we've got our Juji Ito, or some of our Junji Ito stuff right here. Uzumaki, Tomie, Gyo, Venus in the Blind Spot. If you haven't seen these, these are collected versions. These are all kind of their own stories. Venus in the Blind Spot, I believe, is a story collection. But uh, Gyo is one of my favorite Junji Itos. I'm not going to work to pull those out. It's going to be too much work. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to pull out the volumes, but I'll pull out the first of this. But yeah, if you don't know Junji Ito, you write horror stuff. So if you're into horror, definitely check out any of these. Gyo and Uzumaki are definitely great entryways into his work. So if you've never read either of those before, that would be a good place to start. And then you might enjoy some of his short story collections like Venus in the Blind Spot. Some of the other ones we're going to show a little bit later as well. Just because those are also pretty easy entryways. But Gyo's definitely my favorite. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So then you're going to see Vinland Saga, volumes 1 through 11, up to date. So that's uh, up to date so far. And, you know, first cover of Vinland Saga right there. These are the hard covers. I believe these are two-in-ones is what they are. Um, so you get two volumes in one. This is how they're being printed here in the United States. Vinland Saga is the waifu's favorite. It's one of my favorites for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, if you want to watch the anime, definitely watch that too. Mm -hmm. It goes through about almost to the end of volume four. Yeah. So if you have watched the anime, that's where you need to start is from four and up. And I've only gotten through seven. I'm trying to take my time with it because I don't want to just read it all and then just not have it anymore because you know, we're still waiting for more to come out. Uh, but if you like history, if you like Vikings, mm -hmm. you know, just that time period, definitely encourage you to read the series. It's really amazing. Mm -hmm. Anime's baller, but uh, yes, the manga is dope as well all about them Vikings. Okay, the shelf is pretty random, so you're gonna have to bear with it a little bit here. This is, uh, so I'm gonna try my best to pull these out for you guys. So we've got Mob Psycho 100 Reagan. This is the standalone story about Reagan from Mob Psycho 100, which tells the story of a little kid. He's uh, got psychic powers. It's really pretty funny. It's a comedy action shonen. Then you've got three volumes here of Legend of Zelda manga. You have part one and part two of Ocarina of Time and uh, Majora's Mask as well. So these are just the single edition versions of the Akira Himakawa adaptation of the video games. So obviously Legend of Zelda, if you don't know that, you know, you, you can look it up. <laughs> um, Act Age Volumes 1 and 2, these were the only two printed in the U.S. before the series' cancellation in the U.S. due to the author's unright acts, which were pretty terrible. But the artwork, the artist, Shiro Usazaki, she did, um, was not involved in any of the problems that uh, plagued the author. So I did pick these two volumes up kind of in support of her. I know it sucks because kind of supports him too but I wanted to make sure to have these you know in support hopefully she's able to art another do art for another series soon um so that she can kind of continue her career because uh, unfortunate they have things that happened with the author you can look that up too if you want to learn more uh then we randomly have Hunter Hunter volumes one and two classic wow 
That was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> So next we have these Hunter Hunter volumes, two random ones, Hunter Hunter, Story of Gone, Freaks. Uh, it is a series plagued by hiatus, so it does not have an ending yet in the manga, but we do just have the two first volumes. I also have the first two volumes of Death Note, classic story about Shinigamis and Light Yagami and all sorts of interesting stuff. We just have the first two volumes. Uh, the first two volumes of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. So this is the spin-off of Yu-Gi-Oh! that features Jade and Yuki at the Duelist Academy. Pretty cool stuff, um, but yeah, just volumes one and two of that. Black Clover, just volume one. Black Clover is a newer shonen about magic. Promise Neverland, just volume one. Newer shonen about, uh, it's uh, kids and stuff. No, it's like demons that eat kids. Um, check it out. Gintama, just volume one. Also pretty sweet, kind of a comedy set in like the future, but Samurai's just volume one of that. The time I got reincarnated is Yamcha, sort of the Isekai Dragon Ball series. Uh, a couple random old Tokyo Pop volumes, which are Warcraft Legends Volume 1 and 2, and Starcraft Frontline Volume 1. These are based off the video games, Warcraft and Starcraft. Um, I just have had those for a long time, so I'm not sure what they're really worth. Uh, just old manga that I have. Then you're going to see Chainsaw Man Volumes 1 through 5. That's complete up to date. So... We're going to make sure we get all the rest of those. Chainsaw Man tells the story of Dingy. Uh, really just a cool story. If you haven't checked out Chainsaw Man yet, you're probably living under a rock or something. Um, seriously, everyone's talking about it. So check it out if you haven't been able to yet. I don't really want to spoil too much. But it's got demons. It's got fighting. It's got really cool over-the-top action and art. Um, we've got My Hero Academia Vigilantes 1 through 4. I think I picked these up on a deal. Uh, I think it was Half Price Books. Half Price Books or something. So I did read the first two, I think. And it's pretty cool. A uh, side story of My Hero that features a different character, some different lineup of characters. If you're interested in just more world building for My Hero, might be worth it. So then, uh, How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift? Comedy series. Comedy edgy series? That features uh, a young lady who kind of realizes she needs to start going to the gym more. And uh, that's sort of what happens. She starts going to the gym, makes friends to the gym, starts to kind of learn from that, and uh, really starts to learn a lot about herself. So then... On this next shelf, we just have our one through seven of Pokemon Adventures, the collector's editions. So those are super cool. If uh, you don't know what Pokemon is, I would have a tough time, but you know, it, it tells the stories of the games essentially. Not really. Uh, no, I mean. It, it, it's inspired by the games and the anime in a way, but um, it definitely It's kinda... not about Ash, that's for sure. No, it, 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 yeah. is, it is like red, blue, green. It's mm -hmm. not, yeah, it's not Ash Ketchum, but there is, there are the gym leaders like Misty and Brock, like those familiar faces and Professor Oak. So that's consistent, but um, the main characters are just the characters that, they have the same names as they do in the game. So right. yeah, gold, silver, ruby, sapphire, um, all that. So I've read through all of these and actually um, I liked it a lot. I think it's a really cool expansion of the Pokemon universe and lore so if you're interested in pokemon definitely pick those up um i'd also say it's a good kid friendly series too so if your kids want to get into manga i think pokemon is a really good starting place sweet so yeah pokemon adventures and these collector editions are all really nice yeah they're very nice also on the shelf really cool. we do have one of the sailor moon what do they call the eternal editions yeah. they're sort of these massive sailor moon versions we found it for a good price at half price books so we picked up the first one. I don't know if we'll get the rest, but we wanted to get the first one for sure. And the last row of manga here is down here. So we're gonna kind of get low. So the last row of manga, we have Love Sickness, Smash, Shiver, Frankenstein, Fragments of Horror, and Rimina, Junji Ito's Cat Diary, Dissolving Classroom. So that's the rest of our Junji Ito collection. Most of these are short stories, standalone stories. So you can pick up any of these and enjoy because there's no, it's not a continuation, it doesn't have any recurring characters. It's all horror-based short stories. So if you're into horror, sort of, especially like, what, like, disfiguration? I don't know the word for it, but body, like, body horror. Body horror. Uh, Junji Ito's sort of the master of that. So definitely feel free to check out some of those if you see them in your local bookstore. Then we have Rose of Versailles, which we picked up to try. So this is Rose of Versailles Volume 1. It's a classic shoujo series. I don't know much about the story itself, but we're definitely going to try that one. Definitely picked it up. Neo Parasite, I only picked up because of the fact I don't have the OG Parasite series. We have seen the anime, 
But I picked up Neoparasite Neo M because one of the short stories in this was written by Akira Hiramoto, the author of Prison School, and I'm a big fan of that author. So I picked it up just to have that, that short story. Rent a Girl from Volume 1. We love the anime, so we picked up the first volume about a guy. He rents a girlfriend. <laughs> um, drama and antics ensue. Uh, wife, you read this one. I did. Drifting I Dragons, Volume 1. I wasn't that much of a fan of mm. it. Um, it. Yeah, I don't have much to say. I think the art is pretty great, but I'm definitely more of a story-oriented person, and it just wasn't really for me. Right. So we probably won't go any more of those. We probably won't get any more Rain and Girlfriend either. Uh, then I picked up Golosseum Volume 1. Haven't got to read it yet, but it's about like like world leaders, like wrestling or something. Like I think this is like Putin, like chopping a head off a tiger. I'm really not sure. It just looked really badass. So like I wanted to get Volume 1 and try it. So I'm going to try it eventually. And then my, I think there's only 12 volumes. It's like a complete story. So I might get the rest if I liked it. Then we got A Man and His Cat Volume 1. There is a couple volumes of this that are already out in the U.S., about a man living with his cat. Um, Solonin, which is the start of our Ennio Asano kind of set right here. So Solonin, which is a standalone story by Ennio Asano. Obviously, Goodnight Poon Poon belongs here as well, but uh, it's not over here yet. But G Solonin, standalone story. It's about depression also. <laughs> um, Ennio does that a lot. Uh, Dead Dead Demons, Day to Day Destruction, Volume 1. Tried that out. Loved the first volume. It was a lot of fun. Definitely a little more... Uh, diff it's just different. Tries to tell a story through uh, the mind of sort of just something a little different. I think you'll like it if you're into into just the more drama and dialogue driven stories. I think you'll dig it. Downfall, uh, definitely parental advisor on Downfall. This story is also kind of about depression. Um, so, and it feels a little too close to home reading it because you assume Inio Asano is maybe reflecting maybe on his own experiences. I'm not sure, uh, but it, it involves a mangaka and uh, their experiences. Picked up Tier Eternity Volumes 1 and 2 because it was the only two we could find. They're a little hard to find right now because of the anime, but we did pick up Tier Eternity 1 and 2. We really like the anime so far, so we're going to try to get more for sure. Um, wife? Yeah, uh, School Face bookseller Honda's Hand is really cool. Um, it's about an aspiring manga artist who works at a bookstore and sells manga and other things. Um, a lot of the time to tourists in Japan, and then this is basically just based off of their experiences. Um, and there's a lot of really interesting notes in there about how they had to kind of review their stories with, you know, their bosses and, and then their editor. Um, and it, it's a really interesting look at the, uh, the book sales industry, um, which is especially interesting right now because of the rise of manga sales, um, but also uh, just the, the process of, of them forming this story from real life, but also trying to protect their their bosses and their coworkers and the company that they work for. Mm -hmm. And this one's also the wife's yeah. series, The <laughs> yeah, Way of I the House Husbands, husband. Volume One through Five. I did watch the anime on Netflix, but haven't read the manga yet. Wife read yeah, this one. It's so fun. Um, uh, Tatsu is definitely a husbando for me. <laughs> but um, if you were kind of maybe disappointed by the anime, I know people were hoping for. Um, just more animation to it. Um, it. It felt more like a moving comic at times. Um, if you were, weren't happy with it, definitely just switch over to the manga because it's exactly the same thing. Um, but I would say it's more, even more enjoyable to read it uh, than to watch it. And you know, really endearing characters, lots of slapstick humor, lots of comedy that is involved with it. Uh, about this guy who's just trying to overcome his life as as a former uh, gangster mm -hmm. awesome and then lastly uh, just a couple more so we just have saint young men volume one this is the hardback bought this because i was a fan of the anime version and wife wanted to try the manga version so we picked this up she read the first volume decided not to pick up any more of it for the time being maybe maybe in the future this is just the story of jesus and buddha Hanging out, living in an apartment together. It's a comedy series about Jesus and Buddha hanging out and living in an apartment together. So, cool concept, fun, a lot of fun. And the last manga on our shelf is Soul Eater, volumes one and two of the new, uh, I believe they're calling them the yeah, perfect editions of Soul Eater. They're this hardback versions that they have. These are one and a half in one, so you're getting a volume and a half in each one of these, so it'll be shortened a little bit from the original print run. But they are printing these. These are uh, story of Soul Eater. It involves Maka and Soul. They're kind of like Grim Reapers in training, sort of. And there's like a school for 
soul reapers that do this stuff. It's it's a pretty interesting concept. Definitely a shonen that has persisted a little longer than I think a lot of us expected. So it's cool to see these perfect editions. I'm excited to kind of collect the rest of those. We'll most likely try to get the rest. So with that, you've seen all of my waifu and me's complete manga collection. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was around three. We're getting close to about 300 volumes, I believe, last time I counted it. So you can count me. Uh, if someone's watching this at home, you can count how many volumes of manga. Make sure yeah. you count all the Shonen Jumps leave at the a top. Comment if you count all And the Buddha. Yeah, if you yeah. count them, definitely leave a comment. Tell us how many volumes you counted. I think it's right at about 300 right now. So we're hoping to, you know, we, we're always buying manga. So we're just trying to build, build a bigger collection. But other than that, um, let me flip this camera around real quick. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of My Waifu and Me. And as per the usual, this has been another episode of My Waifu and Me. Thanks so much and peace. peace. <laughs> and also don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, and... Be ready, because we're going to be bringing you more manga content here on the My Waifu and Me channel. We also have some more Pokemon content planned, but we have more manga content planned as well. So be excited. Thank you guys again. Uh, see y'all later.